I'm going to um, spend the next uh, few minutes or so giving you a base, basic introduction to TEAR um, with a focus on curation. So what it is, why we do it, and, what, and how is it that it makes TEAR different from other resources you may use. Then I'm going to show you some examples of how you can use TEAR to find information about Arabidopsis genes. I'll give some examples of ways in which you can search TEAR. Um, I'm going to spend most of the time talking about the locus page because it's really a nexus for information about um, gene function in Arabidopsis. I'm going to talk about ways in which you can access data sets um, for analyzing sets of genes and then uh, touch a little bit on some community resources and how to stay in touch and connected with us. And then, of course, we'll have a Q&A for the last 10 minutes. So please, again, put your questions in the chat. So uh, TEAR is the Arabidopsis Information Resource, and it was established in 1999 with funding from the National Science Foundation. So we've been around for 20 years or so. It is the only continuously curated database for Arabidopsis Thaliana, and I'll explain to you what that means. Our focus um, has been on manual curation of gene function from the literature. And around 2013, members of the Terra staff founded this nonprofit, Phoenix Bioinformatics, and established a community-based subscription funding model to ensure the longevity of the database and continued curation of the Arabidopsis genome. And this is in response to the end of funding from the National Science Foundation. So here's members of our team. So we have, uh, this is our current core group of, of people, but what I'll be talking about has been built by this group, as well as many others over the years. Sorry, I seem to have gone ahead. Um, and the people who are highlighted in green are uh, members of our, our scientific staff, our curation team, and the people who, when you send an email to us, are generally the folks who are responding to your questions. Um, and of course, the heart of TEAR is our community. So um, when I say that TEAR focuses on capturing um, gene function information for Arabidopsis saliana, I want to go over the types of functional information that we, that we obtain. So our goal is to capture experimental data from the literature and codify it and make it computationally accessible in TEAR. So each week we import papers from PubMed with Arabidopsis in the title or abstract and extract relevant information from those experiments. So these are low throughput but high quality data that's not easily parsable in order to make it computationally accessible. And the type of information that we capture are things about the biological role or activity of genes, and we capture those in the form of gene ontology annotations. We capture low throughput gene expression um, studies, like for example, um, you know, Gus fusion experiments using plant ontology annotations. Um, and then um, we also get information about alleles and phenotypes. So Arabidopsis has a very, very extensive um, set of mutations, a lot of tDNA insertion mutants, and people publish about, about those, and we um, capture this in the database. In addition, we also maintain the gene symbol registry to ensure that um, Arabidopsis nomenclature rules are adhered to, and we capture gene names and symbols whoops, from the papers. I apologize, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then we craft um, curated summaries. And the goal is to have a um, gold standard functional annotation for the Arabidopsis genome that serves as a reference um, annotation for this model plant species. So another thing that's really important to point out is the where you can find the most current data. So the most current data in TEAR is on the TEAR website. Um, we start with experiments. It used to be that you went into the lab and you conducted experiments and you wrote papers. Um, we might be doing more experiments at home with our kids now, so that's sort of an allusion to that. But when you do publish your, your experiments, those papers are um, read by uh, TEAR curators, and then that information is extracted and made um, in, a, in a curation system. And then those um, data are sent to um, TEAR's website on a weekly basis, so the, uh, we update our website and tools on a weekly basis. We also export data sets on a quarterly basis. So things like the um, gene ontology associations are exported quarterly where they're picked up by groups like the Gene Ontology Consortium for display in their site. We also um, make these whole genome, other types of whole genome data dumps that are immediately available to subscribed users. 
And after that data has been in Tear database for a year, that year-old data is then made available to anybody um, in the public. And it's usually those data sets that you see being integrated into tools like BAR or Phytosome. Um, so it's, this is sort of a way of explaining why you might see differences in information in Tear versus some of these other resources. So it's important when you're using other sources to check the dates and see how current the data is that you're using. All right, so you know, many of you have the uh, interest in the, you know, your interest is understanding what is the function of my gene or of this gene in Arabidopsis. So you might come to Tear because you've done uh, a Google search and you're pointed to directly to a gene page, or you might come to Tear from our website, arabidopsis.org, in which case you'll see on our homepage that there's a basic sort of search box where you can type in a name and then choose your data type. Or we also have under this search header here, what we call advanced searches. And these advanced searches allow you to um, narrow your search, maybe you want to search um, not just by name, but by description, looking for a particular phenotype. You might want to search for a keyword, and by keyword we generally mean gene ontology um, terms. Um, you could restrict your results to a particular subset of genes. Um, my, my point here is that for every type of search and tear, there's usually some form of advanced um, search functionality that you can explore. So for many people, um, uh, Arabidopsis is a reference for understanding gene function in a species other than Arabidopsis. And so uh, a common way to come at TEAR is through sequence similarity searching. So uh, we also have a number of uh, tools for that. We have a BLAST service. You can take your sequence, you can paste it in, um, choose uh, the appropriate BLAST program and data set and then um, obtain um, a nice result with this beautiful graphical in interface. And so um, clicking on one of the links down below for your sequence alignment will take you to a Terra Locus page. And again, there's many ways in which you might find yourself on this page. And I want to really orient you to what is a lot of information here. So over here on the left, is um, really like just one whole long um, uh, locus page in Terra. So if you scroll through, there's quite a lot of information. And each section that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be highlighted over here in the left. So starting at the top of the page on the locus page, we have, um, as I described, these curated names. So we have the systematic locus identifier, but then we have captured all of these other um, symbolic names from the literature. And then we have this nice curated summary. Just below that, whoops, we have this very nice um, graphic of the gene models. And if you click here on this full screen view, it'll take you to JBrowse. And JBrowse is one of three genome browsers that we have at Tear. And if you um, are signed up, or I encourage you to sign up for Shabri's uh, webinar, the first one will be um, this Friday, and then it will also be repeated at the same time next Tuesday. And he's gonna talk extensively about the features of this genome browser. But you can see here that you can turn on um, different tracks. So we have the Airport 11 um, structural annotation, and then I have the tracks turned on to be able to see uh, the tDNA insertions. Also, if I wanted to compare the annotation from, let's say, Terra 10 to Airport 11, I could turn on that track, and I can see that the annotation or the structure, or the gene structure, has changed between these two annotation versions. So you'll learn a lot more about that in Shabri's workshop. Um, so going back to this locus page below this um, this graphic. We have the functional annotations, these gene ontology and plant ontology annotations that I was talking about. And on the locus page, they sort of look like a, a jumble of words. But it's really important to go through and click on this annotation detail page where you see a lot more extensive information. So here we've really broken out each of these annotations. And an annotation is basically a statement or an assertion about gene function that is supported by evidence. And we adhere to the Gene Ontology Consortium standards and assign um, evidence codes. And the evidence codes um, are, are basically there to um, help you assess the confidence is supporting the assertion. So up on top here, you can see that we have this um, annotation that says this gene is involved in granum assembly, which is a biological process. 
and that's inferred by, by a mutant phenotype. And that data is, can be found in this linked publication. So here, and most of these ones up here, are all examples of experimental and based annotations. And just to show you down below, we also include other types of annotations that are based here on um, phylogenetic ancestry or based upon sequence similarity. So it's important to interrogate um, the source um, and the evidence for those annotations. And Tanya Berardini is gonna give the third webinar and she's gonna talk a lot about how the Go annotations are made, how to use them, how to evaluate them. All right, so again, scrolling down on the LOCUS page, um, understanding gene function also often means understanding where and when genes are expressed. And so again, we do curate this low throughput gene expression data, but we've also recently incorporated um, the um, images from the BAR EFP browser so that you can um, rapidly access this high throughput gene expression data. So that's a nice feature and you can um, toggle the view um, directly from within the LOCUS page. So um, again, so, so scrolling further down the page, we have information about gene family. So there's links to help you um, explore other resources. And we now have a link out to a new tool that's being developed at Phoenix Bioinformatics called Phylogenes. And Phylogenes is a, a tool for inferring gene function that takes um, uh, uh, gene families that have been built from, by Panther and um, displays those gene families in the form of a phylogenetic tree alongside information about the gene function. You can also choose to um, show the multiple sequence alignment if you, if you prefer. But you can see here that CURT1B one, Kurt has experimental information about function. And I encourage you to go and explore the Phylogenes website. There's also um, a webinar up there that you can watch to learn more about this important tool. You can do lots of things like download, you know, all of the um, phylogenetic tree data and associated data from it. All right, so again, scrolling further down, um, again, you know, as I said, we uh, curate information about alleles and polymorphism. So um, scrolling down this page, you'll see a section about polymorphisms. You can either click directly on the names or um, you can see where it says see, see all to see the full list of all of the associated polymorphisms. So perhaps you have a gene in another species and you would like to see whether or not it's able to functionally complement loss of function in Arabidopsis. So you might want to look at the various polymorphisms, try and see if you can identify a loss of function allele. And so this is an example of um, some of the detailed information about this uh, alleles. Um, in, in tear, so you, we have information, it's a transposon insertion, it's a recessive mutation, it's known to be a loss of function, um, and then um, any germplasms which are, are linked, to this, um, to, linked to this polymorphism and the phenotypes associated with it. The germplasm information is also, all of the associated germplasms are also listed in the separate section below. Um, that has links out. So if the germplasm is associated to a stock um, in, a, in a resource like ABRC, then we have the associated stock information. Um, sorry. Um, we also uh, make it easy for you to look for those stocks at the relevant um, databases. So you can either search at RECAN or at NASC, particularly if you're um, in Europe, then you want to use NASC as your um, stock center or you can search at ABRC for, for related stocks. Um, so again, scrolling down a little bit more, there's lots of other um, useful um, links that we make available. So we have a series of external links that are organized according to um, their content. So if you want to see if there's information in um, Aerocyc, for example, then there's links out to the metabolic pathway data in Aerocyc. Um, and Sorry. Uh, there's also a section where um, we allow people, users to add comments and give us feedback on these pages. And finally, um, was one of the things that people really find very useful about TEAR is that we have curated lists of publications. So when we um, import papers into our database, we manually make the association between the genes and the publications. And those um, linked publications are listed on the LOCUS page. 
So um, that was a very quick sort of run through about uh, the information on locust pages, but what if you want to get data or for or analyze lots of genes? And most of uh, you have indicated that this is an interest that you have. So we have a number of tools available under the uh, tools bar, tool in the toolbar, there's a section called bulk data retrieval and analysis and a number of different um, tools. And I'm just gonna show you an example of one of them. So this is a tool that enables you to upload a list of, of systematic locus identifiers, these AGI locus IDs, and download a set of gene descriptions. So um, the curated summaries that, that we make. So you would upload your list, and then you would be able to retrieve um, for that gene set all of the, um, the gene symbols and the summary information. Now, if you want to get data for a whole, the whole genome, then you can go into the download section. And if you're subscribed, you can go to the subscriber data releases. There's also the public data releases. And this is an example of some of the um, quarterly release data sets that we make available. So we have, for example, the whole genome's worth of the functional descriptions, all of the gene ontology associations, um, uh, uh, links between loci and phenotypes, loci and papers. And if there's anything here that you don't see that you're interested in, you can contact us and we'll do our best to accommodate your specific requests. Um, Finally, I want to just uh, touch a little bit about some of the other resources that are available. So Terra is part of a large ecosystem of, um, of plant biology resources. And we have um, here under this uh, portals section, a number of different um, uh, links out to various types of resources that um, may be of interest to you. So if you click, for example, on the metabolomics resources, you'll see um, a list of, of useful tools. And if you see something that you think um, would be of interest to the broader plant biology community, we encourage you to share that with us and we'll make that available through these resource pages. So um, again, I want to encourage you to, if you have questions, um, and if there's questions that we don't get to answer here in this webinar, to contact us at Curator. Um, we also have a YouTube channel that has some 